Welcome to Boomhauer 69 channel. And today Boomhauer is going to do a walking and talking video. Um, so for those of you who don't like videos of, of me just in front of a camera, yip yapping, that's what this video is going to be. It's just a talk video. Thought I'd warn that. This is not a product review video or anything, just a me walking and talking video for those who don't like that sort of thing and just want to give you a heads up that's what this video is going to be about it's just me walking and talking um topic is going to be about why i think it's important for people to to educate the well it's going to be about old technology and, and why I think it's important to educate people how to use the old and new technology, basically, because to me, I think it's very important that people should know how to use, like, the old technology and stuff. I was thinking about this at work at my job, you know, walking around collecting carts in a parking lot, and I was thinking to myself, huh, what would be, and thinking about that, I'm like, huh, yeah, that would be a good, you know, because the way things are going and stuff, like, <clears throat> I kind of feel like we're almost headed into, like, another great, another depression, like, great depression, and some people say we're in a silent depression, as they call it, where nobody wants to, you know, where it's like a silent depression where everybody knows it's a depression, but they just don't want to come out and say, yeah, we're in a depression, you know, and stuff. And, which, if that's the case, you know, if we're truly in, in a depression and silent depression, as they call it, that don't surprise me, because the way... If we nowadays came out and said, oh, we're in a Great Depression, let's say our government said, oh, we're broke, we're in a Great Depression and stuff, and it, it would be so catastrophic and chaotic that it, it wouldn't surprise me if we are in a silent depression where nobody wants to, you know, just come out and say it and, and stuff, but I'm not going to say whether or not we are, we are, we aren't, you know. I do believe in high inflation and stuff and certain things and basically on the whole political aspect, I'm a, I believe in the conservative to ways and stuff. So, but yeah, but the reason why I think it's important for us to to learn learn how old technology works right along with the new technology, because to me, in these troubled times and stuff when economic collapse a lot of this old technology gave from back in the day didn't require all this electricity to run and and do things like like for example you know just knowing how to use a shovel a regular hand shovel or or a simple garden tool will go a long way you know versus you know yes you should learn how to use a roller tiller and and gasoline power garden tools and stuff but you should also learn how to use a hand shovel or a garden hoe and, and all uh, that stuff too the, along with the hand tools and same thing with saws like you should, I think everyone should know how to use a chainsaw and everything but you should also know how to use a wiggler or two man crosscut saw and learn how to sharpen that and learn how to use those saws like the old boys did back in the day before they had gas power chainsaws and <clears throat> and electric chainsaws and stuff you know because there might come a day where where simply the the grid goes down and you in and, and in your area you might not simply have enough enough let you simply don't have any electricity or any way to get gas or something so it should be important for people to kind of know how to do certain 
know how to work on two person so you know if you if you out there have a group of friends and y'all go cut wood and stuff you know my my advice would be is to um go buy go buy one go buy a a two man saw off the internet and and you and a friend learn how to cut together with one and get into a rhythm of it so in the event when that the grid goes down or or something catastrophic happens where there's no way in your area to get gas or whatever to cut and and chop wood and stuff then you and your friend would know how to how to work together a, a two-man song and get your rhythm you know get it get your um I guess you call it rhythm going or, or whatever I don't know what our term to really use for that but you and your friend get to know how to to work together and, and use it and work as a team so you can cut down trees and then that way if you know how to sharpen a two uh, a cross a two-man cross cut saw and you and your buddy are really good at working that sort of thing and you know there's other people in your area that is struggling during that collapse or during that um time when there's no power no electricity and you know other people that are burning wood and and you know how to use this saw and you know how to get that tree down and make the firewood and process it and all that stuff that's a good thing because then what can you do offer up your services whether it's sell firewood to your local neighbors or or offer to help them and teach them and stuff you know that's why i think it it's perfect <coughs> important to teach the old technology right along with the new technology same thing with computers you know computers replaced a lot of things in our life and like recipe books and and typewriters and all that stuff you know i think it's important that once you know how to tear down a computer and rebuild a computer from the ground up but they also should know how to basically tear down a typewriter and rebuild the typewriter back from the ground up and get it back fully working and stuff you know i personally don't know how to do a lot of that things but but i think we should as in a, a country I know some schools do and some educational programs out there do and some don't but to me I feel like a lot of times it would help you know like simply I was thinking about old vintage gas pumps at my work like you know I think it's an important uh, for people who I don't know if they teach this to the people who maintenance and, and maintain um, their gas station gas pumps but if you're some guy that maintenance guy that you know works at a local gas station and and you know how to manage and fix and repair modern day gas pumps and you know how to do that you know what I would suggest to you do right now is also learn how to repair the old style gas pump the ones that didn't need electricity to suck up the gas from the tanks and from the ground tanks and put it in the cars and stuff because you never know there might become a day where if you know how to work on that sort of thing and, and even if they're not around but you know how to work on those kind of vintage technology like a vintage gas pump or something then you will have the potential where you could find a, a nearby local machine shop that could help you build pumps and maybe help get your local gas station back up and running in, in a collapse and stuff and I just think in my I just think to myself that that it that's why I, that's why I think it's important to learn how the old doing things the old way way is as important as just as knowing how to do it the new way because because some, and then too, sometimes you might, if you know how to do something the old way, it might be a lot more easier and better to do it the old way than using the new technology and stuff, you know. And that's why if it was me and I was part of the educational system, still, you know, like one of those head of, oh, I forget what they call it, the, the, the secretary head of, 
education or whatever in this country, I would make that a requirement. I wouldn't just, because in my school, all we did was we, we learned that Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone and, and a little bit here and there, but, but I would make it where, where schools and educational systems would have to dig deeper into knowing how to do it, where practically, we, I'd have it set up where practically, particularly, oh boy, I would have it basically set up, set up as an education educator where you really, where basically school children and and school age kids would be able to when they got when they rolled out of high school, they'd be practically know how to recreate the old, the old technology and stuff. And where they'd be like, like say they wanted, for example, the old landline telephone system back in the day, where they would know how to basically almost practically recreate the old shower telephone, they would know how a typewriter works and, and rotary phones and all that stuff where where they could potentially if they wanted to become a uh, say maybe they wanted a job working as as a cell phone repairman or, or simply phone repairman where they'd be able to walk in that walk into a school that would educate them on how to do certain things. The um walk into a school where they teach you how to repair the phone systems, you know, the communication lines and cell phones and landline phones and stuff, where they would be like, oh, yeah, I learned in school how to use the rotary phone. I learned how to use the landline phone and all this stuff because that's one thing that kind of tickles me is watching these videos of, of youngins, young children in the younger generation where they do these videos of showing kids, can you work a work a, a rotary phone or a vintage computer? And kids are like, oh my God, you actually had to physically shut your computer down and press buttons and all that stuff. You know, like I watched a video on YouTube where they film these the younger generation's reaction to the old '90s computers. You know, where you had to press the button to turn the actual computer off and didn't automatically shut off and they're like, oh my god, you actually had to do that and and to me I kinda in some ways I, I found the humor in that. I laughed and like <laughs> like any older generation person do, but to me instead of just a kind of even what I would be doing in that situation, I'd be to those if I was an educator and 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 was the head of the education system I'd be making those kids also learning how to work those computers and so they know know how computers became what they are today and teaching them and, and showing them how to, to properly work that, not just sit there and laugh and make fun of them because they can't, they don't, they never was born with that computer, they don't know how to use it. No, I'd be, okay, this is how you do it and and be educating them and, and stuff and using it as a good learning experience just, uh, just a pointless comedy video kind of thing I know what some of them do and same thing with rotary phones and and typewriters personally me the manual non-electric typewriter the only thing the only reason why I know a little bit about those because back in the 90s my father had one my um grandma she she was a um secretary and in, in the past and she had a couple of them and and one she she no longer or one of the ones she had, she would give them, she ended up giving them to my, to me and my brother, I remember one time, she gave us one, and, and of course, back then, by the time we got them, you couldn't get any ink, ribbon ink for them, so the, whatever ribbon ink was in them, that's what you, you got, and that's what, what I was on it, was what you had, and, and we, me and my brother messed around with it, and that's how we learned how, to probably use a typewriter and what they want to say something. Now as far as like taking one apart and trying to put it back together, I couldn't do that. Because I never knew how to do that. I, and so I think it's important because in these troubled times and that kind of crap, sometimes doing things the old way is going to be helpful. When, when the electricity's down, there's not many people that's going to know how to 
how to take a when the electricity's down and you can't go to your gas station and get gas and stuff. There's not many people out there that's gonna know how to use a hand saw to chop up some firewood to keep their to load their fire pit up to keep them warm, you know, in the middle of winter and stuff. And, and some people don't even know how to use a a wood stove and and I think to myself that it's important to learn how to use certain certain technologies and stuff and, and it's very important to educate people because when the, when the system goes down and the grid and, and all that stuff goes down if ever ever happens where so for some reason the power station the power plants go down and stuff <coughs> excuse me I think it's important to learn how to do stuff the old way using the old technology that didn't require your electricity you know that's why I'm always so fascinated with with the with the olden days you know the technology from the 1800s and the 1900s and and further back and stuff is because they didn't have all these modern day tools and and technology and it makes you wonder how did they do that and and that's where me as a person I would love to see more schools and more of our educational system say okay and be able to educate these kids about okay, this is how they did it, and this is how it happened, and this is how it went down and stuff, you know, on the technology, so that way, way, when the grid goes down and the modern day technology, for whatever reason, goes down, or we're in a war or whatever, we're, we can still, as a nation, as a country, get back on our feet and say, oh, if everybody knew how to work the old stuff along with the new stuff, they'd be like, oh, yeah, I know how to work that old timey tool. I can do this help build, you know. For example, I have hand drills, non-electric brick drills, hand drills, non-motorized, I should say non-motorized drills, drills that you just crank a handle by hand to drill your own stuff. How useful, that would be so useful for a lot of people to learn how to use those tools and know that those are around, so... Power goes out. You can't use your battery drills. You can't use your your electric gas drills or whatever. You know, in, in situations, you can still grab up hand drill, drill your hole, do what you need to do to help get the line back up. Because you know, in order to simply you know to run electrical wires, you gotta be able to drill holes in the pole to to connect your mounting bracket that holds up the the wires and stuff. So. You know, and, and so, for all you people out there that um, know how to do, use certain technologies, or you're an old person that grew up using typewriters, and you know how to tear down a typewriter, and fix it, and repair it, and, and how to tighten up the ribbons, and or, or you're somebody that knows how to work, and tear down old-timey telephones, and rotary phones, and all that stuff, and or you or any other sort of vintage technology and you know how to use that technology and you know everything like the back of your hand as they used to call it well my my advice to you is share that knowledge with everyone you know the especially the younger generation share that knowledge with everyone because you you're, you're gonna help this country out you're gonna help your wherever you're at you're gonna help your your people out, your citizens, your country, you know, if you live in the United States, out of the United States, or wherever, it's going to be helpful. Because if you're ever in, a, in like, an, some sort of economic collapse or depression or whatever, knowing how the old stuff works is going to help get the country back up on the street. Like here in the United States, I live in the United States. I am fascinated with what the old technologies and how telephones used to work back in the day and, and certain things and I'm always talking to people about oh I think it'd be neat to have an old fully working old time telephone switchboard operating system where and 
and being knowledgeable to where I could, if we were, if my country ever went to war and we got bombed all to hell, we could, all to hell and stuff, or where I could, could in my little community set the town up with a bunch of, with at least a little bit of a telephone communication switchboard, where when the computer's down, the robots can't, you know, connect people through landline or a cell phone, have it set up where, where this town could have its own private little telecommunications or whatever and stuff, because I think it'd be neat to own, like, one of them old-timey and have it fully working where all you'd have to do is connect it to the telephone lines and you could go to people and have that call and say, number, please, and hurry up and switchboard them to the next town over and stuff like they used to do and... and and I think that doing that stuff like the old, they used to call them ma bells. A lot of people refer to the old female telephone operators as Lady Ma Bell sometimes. And 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 um, back in the olden days, they would have a lady behind a desk, you know, pulling up cords and plugging them in to connect you to the person you wanted to call back in the day, versus the way they do it nowadays with landline communication. Nowadays, with landline communication, what you're doing is, is you're, you're dialing a number and stuff, and, and the um, computer, the robotic, I'm going to call it robotic, the robot computer says, oh, this person wants to call such and such. Well, there might come a day where that system goes down, and then what, you know? Who knows how to work? you know, the old style telephone operator switchboards and the and the people that do know how to, how to do that stuff, a lot of them are already in their 80s and 90s where where they're at the stage of old, um, you know, old timers and dementia and stuff and, you know, it just they they wouldn't be very much helpful and if they they could, they'd be like, they probably forgot and stuff, so you know I think it's important that we learn how to do that stuff, so that way, when that when the current or the new technology goes down, having placed the old technology up and ready, where all you have to do is just basically take one of these switchboard things, slide it in place, run your wires or however you do, and then be able to to um fire up the telecommunication systems and and stuff, landline systems and. And even with two-way radios and CBs and hams and all that stuff, I think it's also important to learn all that stuff too. Even when the economic collapse goes down and stuff, so. Because I feel like if you know how to use the old technology along with the new technology, it will help. You know, speed up the process of getting the country back on its feet and. And just getting your country back on its feet and stuff, and it's basically the point I'm trying to make is, is it's just I feel like knowing how to use the old technology along with the new technology it would help in the days of economic collapse and stuff, where where if you had to resort to the old technology for some reason. It, it can help you get things fired back up where 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 it would buy you some time to figure out okay why did the new technology fail and how do we repair it to get it back up and running again you know I think that's gonna be helpful you know a lot of people are gonna comment well nowadays we have solar and and gas generators and stuff where and and we got bone bruises well yeah not everything is and people will say, oh, we got bulletproof systems in place and stuff. Well, well, yeah, but not everything is always bulletproof, you know. So I think it's important that to help go nation, especially learning how to grow a garden, you know, how to use simple, basic, you know, hand tools and typewriters and all that stuff. Because if a power outage situation goes out, Rick goes down. And you're one of the lucky people that still have a manual typewriter and you need to, you know, send a letter and you know you ain't got very good handwriting and and very good, you know, what they call penmanship. 
you know, that manual typewriter, if it's, the ink is still, the ink ribbon is still good, you'll be able to, to type a letter and get your message across to somebody if you have to, you know. And a lot of you probably don't even, a lot of people that probably stumble upon this field, like, will hear me talk about an ink ribbon. You'll be like, huh, what's an ink ribbon on a typewriter? Well, <clears throat> if you was a kid growing up in school, you probably took an art class. Art classes that I took in school, we had these little stamps. You remember the little, like, rubber stamps that you would press on a, on a, you'd open up this little pad of ink and you'd press the stamp down into the ink and then you would stamp the picture on your piece of paper or whatever you, you had and stuff and on your little artwork, your paper that you was, um, stamping pictures on. Remember those little, they wooden stamps? They was, they was wooden, and, and on the top, it would show you what the picture was, and then on the bottom, it had a rubber piece where you would rub the ink on. You would have this little ink pad that you would open up, or almost look like a, like a credit card holder almost, and you would lift this little ink pad up, and you would rub the rubber stamp on the ink, and then, then once the rubber stamp had ink on it, you could press down really hard on the the piece of paper and it would allow you to stamp a picture and stuff well that's how typewriters were typewriters what typewriters used to do was is it had a little arm and when you press down on the key this little arm would go up to the ribbon the ink ribbon and the reason why they call it a ribbon because it looked like a a piece of a very long ribbon, two spools. It had a little round circle pieces on each end, and you would slide it onto the um, typewriter, and you'd make sure it was nice and tight, your ribbon. And your ribbon would go up every time you press down a letter on the key. And this little key, let's say you wanted to type the letter A on a typewriter. First, you'd load your paper for in the typewriter. You would they have little knobs where you spin the little knobs, and, and it would allow the paper to spin up to in the slot there would be a little slot and you would spin the knob and it would uh, adjust your paper to where you can continue to type because you would use like a printer you just take standard paper and be able to type <coughs> type and what you would do is you say you wanted to type the letter a on a type where you would press down the a button and a little arm with a little rubber stamp that had the letter a on it would come up and it would press onto the rubber or say this my arm right here was the um rubber ink and, and this my finger was the the little arm stamp you would it would press real hard real fast onto the rubber ink ink ribbon which the ribbon would rub up against the paper and would cause an indentation in a print of the letter and stuff and but yeah, that's why I think it's important for people to know how to use use the old technology along with the new technology in case of emergency. You have to basically resort back to using the old the old ways and stuff. And I feel like in like an economic collapse in a country or something, or <laughs> something happens in your area where the grid goes down and stuff, and you can't get gas, fuel, and stuff. <coughs> feeling stuff <coughs> I think it's very important to important to learn how to also do the old ways to help you know keep things afloat I'm gonna call it keep things afloat until you can figure out okay why is the new technology not working what's wrong and, and basically buy buy you some time and stuff you know so so I I, I should I highly promote people learning how to do things the old ways and stuff and, and knowing how to do certain things a certain way like old, learning how to use old style telephones like even me personally if I have the money to do so in the near future I would love to learn how to how to hook up and how to use the old style hand crank wall phones the kind where you just crank the handle until you get the operator and you say yeah operator I like such and such a person and Learn how to 
learn how to 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 make make those phones. How did they make those, and what did they use, and all that stuff, and, and learn all that stuff. That's because <clears throat> knowing how to work those things and do those things, you'll be able to. <clears throat> to me, in person, I feel like you'd be able to help out the world of society. So for one, like the cell phone systems go down, and and you can still. In your local area, repair your telephone landline system, and and you know how to how to make the most out of phones. You know, I feel like it would come in handy in the event of a collapse. Cause I always think about the lost technology, like the ancient pyramids and, and civilizations. You know, the Noah and the flood and stuff. And after the flood, like like had we been able to like, what caused people to, you know, stop figuring out how does the pyramids work, what was the pyramids for, and all that stuff, you know. Like, because I feel like in, in Egyptian times and old times before the flood, I think there was a lot of technology we had on this earth that has been long gone forgotten, and I think a lot of it is is they just didn't care to teach the old generation how to do certain things and how to work certain le certain technologies where where basically when Noah came and was starting his life out, you know, from kid to adult until God came to him and said, hey, you know, you need to build an ark and stuff. I think there was a lot of technology that was long gone forgot because people thought, ah, we're not going to teach the new generation how to do these certain things and and I feel like that can be a bad thing, not teaching how to use the old technology along with the new technology, you know. I think it's highly important if you're going to teach the new generation how to use cell phones and, and stuff like that, then you need to also teach them how to use a landline telephone right along with it, too, you know, okay. Here's the cell phone, this is, and show them, hey, this is the granddad of, of the cell phone, here's the landline telephone, you know, and you really teach that stuff, you know. Some schools do teach that stuff, you know, I learned a little bit growing up, but I I feel like they don't teach enough of it, basically. And, and I think we need to, as a nation, we need to focus more on, on that, learning how to use the old technology along with the new technology. In the event... Of some sort of catastrophic fake collapse, economic collapse or something, and some sort of collapse and stuff. Because I think it would help, like in my country, I live in the United States of America, and I think it would, having a bunch of people educated on how to do things the old ways and stuff, I think would help, you know, get the country, get the United States of America back on their feet and stuff. And, and I, in this video, I'm using my country as just an example and stuff, but even in, if you live in another country and stuff, you know, learn how your, your ancestors and people did certain things and stuff, because it's, it's really going to help you, yeah, if you're, wherever you're living, if your area falls into some sort of catastrophic collapse or something, to know how the old technology works, so that will help to me get your get you back on your feet and, and and help speed up the process of figuring out, hey, why did the new technology fail? What's wrong with it? And and basically buy you some time and stuff and and stuff. I hope you all enjoy this video. It's a thirty four minute long video. I do a really long video of me ranting about why I think it's good to learn the old technology and the new technology both. I think we should learn how to do both of it. You know, sorry for kind of repeat myself in this video, but there's my thoughts about learning how the the old ways were done and stuff, you know. I'm personally fascinated with the old ways and, and stuff, so. But I think we need to, as a country in the United States, also educate people more, dig deeper and do more at educating people how old telephones work and old technology work along with the new technology because I think in the long run that's going to help save this country and put this country, the United States of America, back on its feet if there was ever a 
catastrophic event where the country just collapsed or started collapsing where the grid went down. They always call it the grid system went down and stuff, you know. Yes, we do have shoulders and generators and all that stuff, but to me, I still think even with the other measures in place, it's still important. We need to still learn your ways and stuff, but hope you like this sort of video. Um, hope you find this interesting and helpful. I, I, I hope I was able to Hope you all understand what I'm trying to say here. I'm not very good at, you know, educating people and and not very good at getting my point across. I hope you all kind of figure out what I'm, where I'm getting at and stuff. And Hope you all have a good day. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this sort of content, give this video a, a beautiful thumbs up, thumbs down, you know. Comment your thoughts below what you think about this video and stuff. I do apologize. It's, um... Now around 8, 9 o'clock, and I don't have a flashlight on me, so I'm sorry if the towards the end here is a little dark and you can't see my, my ugly mug, so, but don't forget to comment your thoughts below, and please share this video, video with everyone you know, because by you people sharing my videos, you always with your friends and family members and everyone you know, that's going to help me um, grow this channel and, and be able to do the things I want to do on this channel and stuff. Cause that's one of the things I'd like to do is be able to, you know, kind of show off some cool old vintage antique stuff, you know, be able to have money to go into a antique store and buy up some cool old antique stuff and feature it on this channel to raise awareness about it and stuff. Cause again, my channel is all about trying to help people and stuff, whether it's sharing knowledge or whatever the case may be. Hope you all have a good day and thank you for watching.